I'm Molly. Uh, welcome to the greenhouse. So we have um, all of our heirloom tomatoes growing in here. They're trellised up here. They've been in here for now about um, four or five months. So they got started really early in the season. So now they're way up over my head. Um, and I've got a couple kind of like pointers for you on like how to grow them. So you can see that like these guys, the heirlooms especially, grow in these kind of like bunches on the plant. Um, so the more space you give them to grow up, the more tomatoes you end up having. Um, this is kind of a fancy way of trellising them vertically with twine. But even with tomato cages, the more kind of vertical space you give them, the more tomatoes you end up having. Um, so let's talk about like what ripe tomatoes look like. So right here we've got kind of like all the different stages of tomato ripeness. So these guys, which are really small, these guys, um, when they're totally green like this, would be good for frying. They're really hard. Um, this is the, you know, the stem end and the blossom end here. Um, this, this color and shape and like kind of earliness is good for um, fried green tomatoes. And then they start, you can see they get like this little bit of color on them. These guys are starting to soften on the inside. They're not as good. They're in the middler stage. They're not that great for frying. They're not that great for making sauce yet. So if you see them starting to have that little color, just hold on them for a minute because then they're going to transition to that. They're going to start to get color. They tend to get more color. This, this, the top of the plant stays green long. You're going to see color form on the bottom first. So it's a good idea to kind of flip them over when you're checking your tomatoes to look for that color to start to appear. And then finally, when you see full color on the bottom and the top, this guy is ready for fresh eating, for sauce. Um, you can feel, I wish you could feel this, but you can feel that they kind of start to get soft and that skin starts to thin out. Um, that's what you want and that's why we love heirloom tomatoes so much. Tons of flavor, thin skin. They're great to just kind of eat off the vine. Um, and just a quick note about color. <laughs> Ooh, ah. Tomatoes, <laughs> heirlooms especially, come in a rainbow of colors, right? So we have anything from like dark, kind of like chocolatey, like reddish brown. Um, these guys specifically have a really smoky flavor, this variety. And then the reds, the burgundies, these guys are cool because when they're ripe, they get this green flecking. Uh, so they even like tell you when they're ripe, which is really cool. Um, some bicolors, so this is a striped German. And then some tomatoes and the cherries, all sorts of color. Some tomatoes, when they're ripe, are still green. So some of them, depending on the variety, can trick you out a little bit. But this green tomato is actually fully ripe and it's really, really sweet. And so is this one. So it's really important to know what variety of tomato you have in your backyard so that you know what it looks like when it's fully ripe and absolutely delicious. Um, okay. Just wanted to show you real quick. This is striped German. Ooh. It's super ripe. You can see it's got full color down here. A little less color on the top, but that's okay. And this one is one of my favorites for making BLTs, because when you make that cut, mm. it's beautiful and tie-dyed on the middle. Mm. Dripping. Love it. <laughs> Full of sugar, super sweet. Let me ask you this. Yeah. What's the difference between an heirloom and a regular tomato? Oh man, that <laughs> is a great question. So heirlooms, are it's all about genetics. So heirlooms, um, have been, their seeds have been passed down for generations um, and the plant produces seeds that if you were to save these next year that plant will be true to type so the same kind of tomato will grow from plants that are from saved seed 
So heirlooms have stable like seed genetics year to year. Um, uh, they don't store well. They have way more flavor in general. Um, and uh, they're really diverse and their genetics are stable year to year. Um, hybrids are the opposite of that. They're usually bred for um, specific traits like thick skin for storing or uh, less seeds because they're used for making sauce um, or disease resistance because they're being grown in like a, a kind of an unusual environment. And what a breeder will do is they'll take a mother plant that has really good like thick skin but poor flavor and cross pollinate it with like you know a, a male another plant that has good flavor but thin skins so that the seeds the hybrid seeds are a cross between those like characteristics so you end up with a hybrid tomato that has both traits. It stores really well and has thick skin, but it also has the flavor. And the only problem with hybrids is that if you were to save seeds from that hybrid tomato, when you plant them, the genetics are not stable. So the next generation may have bad flavor, good flavor, thick skin, thin skin, uh, poor, you know, there's no guarantee of what um, that tomato plant will look like mm -hmm. if you were to save the seeds. Mm -hmm. Whereas heirlooms, they're tried and true, you know what you're getting, and in terms of building resiliency amongst gardeners and, um, you know, having your own seed stores and maybe just like saving your favorite ones year after year, if they're from hybrid seed, you could have that forever. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. hybrids for very specific like uses um, and heirlooms for would be my recommendation for gardeners because one they're delicious delicious, delicious. <laughs> two there are hundreds and hundreds of different kinds that you can find um, and three you could have those seeds for you and your family for as long as you uh, keep the plants going and keep harvesting seeds from them what's your favorite heirloom varieties my favorite heirloom right now, actually I have it. <laughs> it's that guy. Do, 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 it's do. called the Black Crim. <laughs> Black K-R-I-M. This is my favorite tomato to make sauce out of. It has really, really deep flavor. Uh, it's a, it's a, I believe a Russian heirloom, um, that now is just kind of like everybody has out in population, but this is so good, um, for making sauce, and it makes a sauce that's just as dark red as this, mm. um, it's amazing, um, and actually, it also kind of tricks you out. Yeah. Right? So this tomato is totally fully ripe, but you'll see... Go back to our example. That's a bad example. Some tomatoes will stay green. They call this the shoulder. They'll stay green on the shoulder even when they're ripe. So whereas this guy, you got full color, and that told you that this guy was fully ripe. You know, full color, full color. Some tomatoes, especially the darker ones, mm -hmm. keep this green shoulder um, even after they're fully ripe. So you always want to flip them over and look for, this is the blossom end. This is the belly button of the plant, by the <laughs> way. This is where the the flower of the tomato was, just like, you know, like on you, that's a belly button. So you're looking at the belly button and if it's, if it's soft to the touch and you've got full 